Hello people of YouTube, it's Deepak here, and welcome to DCS World 2.9.2 and Heat Blur Simulations AGS 37 Vigan Module. Welcome to Tutorial 17, Defensive Systems. Today we're going to take a look at the three defensive systems available to the Vigan. That is the RWR, Radar Warning Receiver, the ECM Pod, which can be fitted, and the KB Flare and Chaff Dispenser Pod. Currently you can see both of these pods installed on the aircraft. The aircraft has no integrated jammer or chaff and flare capability. They can only be added as pods, and these pods can only be carried singly on pylons 2 and 6. You're seeing a configuration just now with one of each. Um, it is only possible to carry one ECM pod, as you see here. However, you can carry two of the KB flare and chaff dispensing pods, which would double the amount of chaff and flares that you have. This would then mean that you cannot carry the jammer, however. Uh, each of the chaff and flare pods carries 210 chaff and 72 flares. So quite a lot, quite a capable system. If we jump into the cockpit just now, I'll go over the controls for the defensive systems in the aircraft. Um, straight away, you can probably hear it right now, the RWR is in action. RWR is a set of six lights around the central indicator. They define arcs uh, around which the RWR is receiving radar energy. It does no form of processing whatsoever, uh, and as such, the pilot is expected to recognize the different frequencies and tones that radars can produce. Uh, the system is actually basically taking the received radar energy and converting the frequencies of that into audio tones. So each radar that can illuminate you is distinct, you're going to tend to find that low tones with uh, a kind of bigger gap between each scan are search radars, and then the radars that are higher pitched and are scanning more rapidly, those will be tracking radars. Um, and then if you get, I think it's something like five scans with one second pause, so like a very, very rapid high pitched scan, that's usually continuous wave, and that probably indicates that something something is launched against you. However, it's not totally reliable. Um, so there may be cases where you're only receiving what you consider to be a tracking tone, and yet you have in fact been, la been launched against. So um, you have to be quite careful with this system. Also note that with almost all RWRs, it has kind of roll limits. If you roll the aircraft over too far, it's not going to uh, pick up signals. However, you will still be potentially. And yeah, these lights, if the two front lights are illuminated, the thing is to the front. If just one of these is illuminated, that means it's to the front left or front right. Then got left and right. And then if both of the, the bottom ones are illuminated, it's behind you. Or if one of them, if this one is, it's rear to the left or rear to the right. And the nice thing is, because the, the this is also effectively your HSI, uh, you get bearing information on the outer ring around the RWR. Controls for most of the uh, countermeasure systems are found here on the right console. Of note, this mode selector here is for the RWR. It has modes for off completely, in which it will do nothing. It has loose, which is just lights. Uh, in lights only mode, you will get the lights, but no tone. And then you have a mode, center that a bit better. Then you have a mode for lights and, well, loose and lewd, which is lights and sound. Uh, and that gives you both. That's the only control that you have for the RWR. These uh, knobs just behind the RWR are the controls for the KB flare and chaff pod. It has kind of a, a main mode slash program. It has a selector for chaff only. R is chaff. R and F is chaff and flares. And F is just flares. Uh, and you then also have what it calls the streak mode. This is only available if you're carrying two KB pods. But streak mode can either be in zero or four, so that's actually off or on. In streak mode, uh, the programs will be released from the pods um, in serial. So, you know, effectively you'll get uh, a dispense from the left, then a dispense from the right, and so on. And th those will continue. With streak mode off, both pods will dispense simultaneously. So you can actually stretch out your countermeasures um, you know, use them for a bit longer if you have streak mode on, or if you just want to get density of countermeasures, then you would have this off. The selectors that we have in front of this are for the jammer pod. Uh, zero on the left-hand selector means the pod is off. 
A means the pod is in preheat. If you started off on the ground, you need to preheat for three minutes before you can use the pod. And then modes B, D, or E mean the pod will actually emit. <clears throat> and uh, in, in combination with the right-hand selector, it will, it will emit. Um, something to note is that if you have it in A mode, in the preheat mode, then the right-hand selector will control its electronic intelligence gathering modes or listening modes. So uh, having it in, in preheat in F means it will do nothing. It will literally just preheat. Having it in A and G will go into a, a low sensitivity recording mode. In H or J, it's in high sensitivity recording mode. And in K, it will interleave between low and high modes. Uh, if you go into your knee board, you can then flip all the way through to Elint, uh, and over a period of time, it will you know, you'll have to kind of fly the aircraft around and take readings from from many different angles. We'll cover this in a future video, but you'll eventually get recorded sources and their positions uh, in this Elint page. As I said, we'll cover that later. In normal operation, you're probably just going to want it in A and F to be in complete standby or you can flip it into B mode and it will then actually emit whenever you're being um, locked up by uh, a radar or being scanned by a radar, in fact. Do note that the jammer only covers the frontal aspect. So it's 60 degrees left and right and 45 degrees up and down. Um, I want to actually see its little... can't see the wing from here. Uh, you see that it has this kind of ray dome on the front, so it's only actually emitting forwards. So you do have to be facing uh, the the radar that you want to jam. Also note, um, oh actually, it's uh, that's the that's the the warning that the the pod is not working. We put it into B mode. You would normally see a light from Motwerk. Uh, I obviously reset the pod, and so it's going to have to go through its preheat again. So I'm going to leave it in A. Uh, this should eventually go out. I wonder, can we actually power cycle it? Uh, there should be a way of power cycling the pod. You actually would not normally have that, and uh, that's that's actually indicating that I've broken the pod, basically. Uh, normally it'll be the light below that that says Motwerk. We'll leave it like this just now and see if it uh, correctly preheats. If not, uh, I'll then reset the simulation and show you what it should look like. Last thing to note is we have this little mood selector here on the canopy rail, labelled KB. It has settings for Froan, Cont, which is continuous, an int, which is intermittent. Uh, and th th that is... Um, it triggers the dispensing of a selected program. Uh, note that you also have a quick release button on your throttle, and this does a quick release of program 2 only. I'll actually show you where that is. Fast countermeasures dispense, in fact. Uh, it's noted as fast countermeasures dispense. Uh, this is kind of your manual mode. This will this will only ever dispense program two. If you s manually select a program, you can then use this switch to control the dispensing of just that program. Uh, or in automatic mode, the system will automatically dispense based on um, what's locked you up. So let's go over the settings for the KB pod. Uh, the main mode here on the left has automatic, off, and in programs 1, 2, and 3. These programs 1, 2, and 3 correspond to uh, 1 being a rapid mode, 2 being a medium mode, and 3 being a slow mode. Uh, and when you're in the program mode, this will actually only dispense chaff. Um, flares can only be dispensed using the quick release button on the trigger. And in that case, hitting that button on the trigger will only ever release mode 2, program 2, sorry, which is medium speed, and it will respect the setting of this switch. Um, so you can have the, the quick release only do chaff, chaff and flares, or just flares. Let's demonstrate that just now. I'm going to leave it in chaff and flares mode, and actually the main mode is in off. Uh, if I go to external view, I'm going to tap the fast release button, and you'll see that I get a chaff and a flare. Uh, it's kind of one a second. Actually, maybe once every two seconds, and it will continue to do that until I tap the button again, and now the launch is inhibited. Alternatively, I could actually select a program. So let's say I want rapid mode, and I want, again, chaff and flares, although this will only give me chaff. I can then either put it into intermittent mode, 
where it will do that for five seconds, or I can flip it back to continuous mode, and then it will continuously release until I manually put this switch back into the middle position again, which is off. Let's do the intermittent for now. So you can see it's doing a rapid release of chaff just now, and after a few seconds the switch reset back into the middle, and it's no longer dumping those anymore. I could put it into... actually, let's put it into a different program. Let's put it into program 3, the slow one. And let's put it into continuous. And this would be perfect for an ingress where you suspect there might be enemies. You can just leave that switch in continuous mode, and it will never stop until it actually runs out of chaff. Uh, which will probably take something in the region of 8 minutes in this setting. And then I have to manually put the switch back into the middle. Or, uh, again, I can hit the fast release. That gives me program 2 immediately until I press the button again and stop it. So in effect, you can always have two programs pre-selected. Uh, you have program 2 always available on the fast release, uh, and then you could also have, say, program 3 for a slower release ready to go on the KB switch here on the canopy rail, either as an intermittent or as a continuous. Lastly, let's, uh, let's demonstrate the automatic mode. I'm going to put it all the way around to automatic, and then for automatic mode, you also need to have the KB switch either in continuous or intermittent. Although intermittent will only give you five seconds of operation at a time. I'm going to put it into continuous. And what the system is supposed to do, and uh, I don't know how well this works, but let's fly in, inbound towards this uh, radar emitter. Uh, continuous mode is supposed to start dumping uh, chaff in the event that the system detects that we've been locked. So let's see how well this works. I'm actually going to go full afterburner and continue inbound. Actually, let's get some altitude. That will make it more likely the system's going to launch at us. And the warning light for the jammer came off again, so I guess that means that yes, indeed, uh, the preheat has worked. At this stage, I could put it into mode B, in which case it would jam the target. In fact, let's demonstrate that. Jammer in mode B, and uh, I don't think it matters what position I put any of the rest of it into. And if it detects that we're being locked up, uh, it will actually start automatically jamming, and we'll get the light on the right... Oh, there it is. Yeah, we just saw the light now. So the jammer is now operating. Motwerk means that it is jamming that particular ring. So that's good. That's functional. Let's put it back into A mode, which is, in effect, standby. Bring the power back a little bit. We're going a bit fast. I wonder, has this thing launched at us yet? No, it has not. Okay, so that may well mean the system is working correctly. Let's uh, continue inbound and continue to climb. See it's moving round to the side. This is a fairly high-pitched tone, so I think this is a tracking radar. Oh, there we go. That is definitely a tracking radar now. I believe we have been launched against. Actually, we haven't. We haven't been launched against yet, but that, that is definitely the tracking radar now. I would have expected in automatic the system to start dispensing, but it's not. I wonder if the streak mode makes any difference, but I, I don't think it does. So, it may well be the case the system doesn't work quite the way I think it does. And we have been launched against, so yeah, it's not working for this type of radar. I have seen it work against some. We're almost certainly going to die now, uh, but I have set the aircraft to immortal for the purposes of this demonstration. So yeah, the... The automatic is supposed to operate with KB switch in continuous. It's coming for us. It's got, it looks like it wouldn't actually reach us. Gonna run out of steam just a little bit off of our wing there. That was a hit, actually. It just managed to reach us. Luckily, I am immortal. Uh, it'll probably continue to launch against us. So yeah, uh, the manual states that we should have KB mode selector here in automatic. We should have this switch in RF, 
uh, the series in zero, and then we should have KB in either continuous or intermittent, and it should then automatically dispense countermeasures, but it is not working, it would seem. That might be a bug in the current version. However, we can still press the fast dispense button, and stuff will happen. That was another hit. Yep, so we would have died again. I'm going to hit the button again to turn that off. So yeah, it would seem that the automatic mode is not working. In any case, that's a full demonstration of the RWR, the jammer, and the countermeasure system. Let's actually put the jammer into B mode. That means it will respond to emissions that it receives, and after a short delay, it should actually start jamming stuff. Uh, let's see if the e-lint ever came up. No, we didn't have it in recording mode, so it didn't actually do it. So, yep, that is a full demonstration. Um, if you want to figure out what the tones of different radars sound like, there's a website that you can visit called vigantools.se where you can hear all the different tones of the different radars in DCS.